a tremendous big bad you know i think yes. the, the mayor is right up there with with some of the best big bads absolutely yes the actor is just wonderful harry grodick is brilliant isn't he yeah and i really love that sort of more cerebral more calm politician type thing where mm. Yeah, he, he almost plays it as a politician. It's like he oh, never he lets the political mm. facade totally drop. So it's almost mm -hmm. like he lives that. Does that, but in short bursts where like yes. it'll just come out of nowhere like an explosion. And so for what on the surface seems like such a calm, calculated guy, how he makes certain scenes quite scary with, with him, I, yes. I think in the finale also is a good example you know in the hospital and scenes mm. like that where yeah you just wonder where has that come from but he, he just plays it so well where mm. it it feels natural we do actually find the relationship with faith very tender very touching mm -hmm. and that's that's something which buffy does well where you actually do get in into the the headspace of the villains mm -hmm. as well as the good guys because yeah. we said they did that really in a way with Spike and Drusilla yes. and yes. the villains in season two, where yeah. she's following a certain path. And then it, I think it just shows how in life, and this is related to some of the themes of the show, then in life, if you just make one decision differently, like compared to the way it could have gone, your whole like direction can change she's definitely a good guy like like she, she she has her own ways and she a bit like cordy adds that sort of alternative like feel to the main characters which you need in this sort of show like she comes mm. in shakes things up and has her own yes. way of doing things and of amends when i watched that originally I thought, right, that's it. She's a good guy now. She, she's not really changing anything. Yeah. And then that's why I actually really like the way they handle her change. It's a, it's a nice little surprise, and I think they handle it really well and in a very, like, believable type way. Faith, when I was younger, Faith was my favourite Buffyverse character. Like, yeah. barring none. Um, And a lot of that had to do with when I was younger, I deeply identified with faith i really identified with her just a lot of the stuff that she did and said um a lot of the hints about her background just she was just a character that was really really close to my heart and i absolutely adored her to the point that i was a little bit blind when it came to her character and i would you know very much like try to excuse her actions and stuff obviously being older now I don't identify with Faith as much or really at all anymore, but I can still remember what it was like to connect with that character. Watching Faith now, I mostly just get really sad because she has so, she is such a tragic character. Liza is fantastic in the role. I think that her relationship with the mayor is one of the most endearing things in season three. I mean, obviously he's a little sinister and, you know, he, if she steps out of line, you're like, what would happen? But by the same token, I'm like, okay, so Faith moves to Sunnydale. There's three adults in her life, Joyce, Giles and Wesley, who know where she's living who know that she's an underage girl living alone in a crap box motel yeah. no one bothers to offer her anywhere to stay and yet the minute she goes to work for the mayor the very first thing he does is give her a better living space it's like how do you not love a dynamic or a character who does that like and then when she tries to pull the yeah. sugar daddy thing on him you know he he won't go for that you know i just love that no faith i don't go for that i'm a family man and just you know <laughs> yeah. and he gives her a playstation and he makes her feel special yeah. and wanted and i think that he does genuinely care about her i think oh. there are there are several scenes that show you that he does actually see her as a daughter and he does care about her and he does love her. And I just think that that's beautiful, but also really tragic for Faith that the only person that she could really find to be on her side is an evil, like, 
is an evil guy who wants to become a giant snake demon. A little bit more world wise than the Scoobies are. She's obviously seen mm. more of the world. She's obviously had a much tougher life uh, than any of the Scoobies, who, mind you, don't have the best home situations themselves. Of um, her connection with Angel, which will then obviously get really that built upon. That becomes a big thing. That becomes such on. a big thing later on. Going to the mythology of things, like just Faith arriving, mm. and, and the explanation makes sense because absolutely when Kendra was killed, that mm -hmm. ele like activated Faith's debut, which I think is very entertaining, very well yeah. done. I also enjoy Mr. Trick's debut, another example of them, like, spicing things up and yeah. making the vampires more diverse. Like the scenes with him and the mayor, I think they have a good chemistry. I quite like him as the mayor's number two for a while. Yeah. And yeah, he's just one of those where he, he brings a bit more charisma, he has some choice lines, and... Yeah, the actor I really like, and, and he definitely stands out as one of the more interesting vampires. And and mm -hmm. as sort of like a, a sidekick or, or, or like a sort of a B villain, if you like, I think he's very effective. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I absolutely love his first scene there or you know at the drive-in that is such uh, that, that that might be one of my favorite sort of openings to an episode it's a great like, scene like just really pre-credit sort of scenes um yeah because you've got the other one and you just see the kissing contrast toast? yeah kissing toast of course <laughs> <laughs> you, you just see the contrast between the two vampires where ki yeah. kissing toast as we much, <laughs> must call him always now is just getting really uptight and and frustrated and trick is just so laid back and he's cool just chill. and, and yeah. it's like oh now i'm hungry and casually yeah. grabs the guy and i, I just love that the limousine driving off and him eating, yeah. the guy inside. eating the guy yeah and i just love casual stuff like that like him saying dinner's here and it's like the pizza guy but the pizza guy's mm. the dinner not not the pizza just yeah. drags him in it's really great stuff have a nice night sir where about catch the slayer i'm going to rip her spine from her body and i'm going to eat her heart and suck the marrow from her bones no, I'm some great dialogue he has some great delivery of lines he, he's got a real presence to him and, and i just like him as as the mayor's number two for a while it's yeah a they work really well they do. So I think, yeah, Mr. Trick is a, is a more underrated character. We've got the faith part, we've uh -huh. got the trick part, and then we get the weak part, which is the really bland Scott. I'm, yeah, I'm watching the season three this time around, right? And I'm like, what is the point of Scott Hope? Like, what is the point? You could take him out of these episodes and they would be fine. They would play out almost exactly the same way. He is so... Blah. And who buys someone they're not even dating a clutter ring? Like, come on, boy. Let's let's just slow down a bit, okay? <laughs> yeah, he's he's terrible, he and is. It, it continues like the run of when whenever they try and you know ship Buffy with a regular guy, it, it never really works. They always come off very boring and quite annoying and and it mm -hmm. turns out he's a bit of a douchey extreme like they're not even dating properly yet and then he buys a the sort of like it's the sort of gift you like you wait at least six months you know yeah. when well, been dating given that while. angel gave it to her on her 17th <laughs> birthday after they've been to, i mean for god's sake they use them as wedding bands in ireland like this is not a yeah. small insignificant gift and i know they wanted to have the whole call back to angel but it just seemed really flimsy like oh i'm not even dating miss girl but i'm gonna buy her a ring like come on yeah and and i've got a pet peeve with these sorts of characters and mm. it's sort of then they try too hard to make them seem interesting or like quirky. Yeah. it's like the whole mm. buster keaton film yeah <laughs> I know, right? Like a 17 or 18 year old would be like into Buster Keaton. I know! Keaton. 
<laughs> just like, oh, let's go on our first date to a bar. And he's got that really crappy line, Keaton is key. He's key. I know. Terrible. He says that I just wanted to punch him in his stupid yeah. face. It annoys me a, a bit more than in... Owen? Yeah, because he, he was rubbish, but at least it was only one episode. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The other stuff in the episode was quite enjoyable, but mm. yeah. Because we actually get a few episodes of, of Hope. Um, well... Not hoped. The reason he gave for dumping her was was just like <gasps> terrible, such absolutely terrible. Oh, mm. yeah. When he's all like, "Oh, before you were so full of life, and now you just seem distracted." It's like, what? What bullshit reason is that? Yeah, you just wanted yeah. to get in someone else's bed. That being said, Faith's little revenge on you yeah, at the home going that is brilliant yeah. oh so good faith's a good friend at least in the beginning he really had that coming that that yeah he did her and the mayor together and and the whole direction they because i personally don't think her just becoming a part of the scoobies would have been half as interesting i think it's much more interesting her taking a dark turn especially oh, yeah. since with her and buffy you've got the whole almost mirror image type thing where faith is the slightly darker version of buffy or she's the more out there bad girl mm -hmm. version faith yeah. sort of dancing between the two for a while is is really interesting to what aren't you a vision i feel like it's stupid in this you look lovely perfect for the ascension any boys that manage to survive will be lining up to ask you out. It just isn't me, though. Not you. Let me tell you something. Nobody knows what you are. Not even you, little Miss Seen at all. The Ascension isn't just my day. It's yours, too. Your day to blossom, show the world what a powerful girl you are. I think of what you've done. What I know you will do, no father could be prouder. How often do things go smoothly? So you'll still need me in there. Always. Face a good girl. She can take anything, they'll throw at her. She's gonna be all right. She'll be all right. Some people who should be here today aren't. very much alone but you're never alone you'll always have me